Okay, we've uh, got a little bit, just I want to cover something really quickly that's been um, on my mind a little bit recently. Especially now that I'm, I'm working on uh, more, some more hooves, some more um, examples, as I showed you guys, if you'd watched that video, but uh, how I made a, uh, a hinged openable uh, hoof that uh, allows us to see on the inside of the hoof for learning about these things. These, uh, these examples I find are just invaluable. Without being able to picture the inside of the hoof, it's a little bit, I'd say quite a bit harder to be uh, an efficient and uh, proficient uh, trimmer or a farrier. Um, so a lot of these experiments and, and understandings of what's going on uh, on the inside uh, apply so much to the outside <clears throat> that uh, I, I think you just have to do it. So one of the things that I wanted to quickly talk about, and I'm going to give some just step by steps here of, of why I think it, but I've been working on a new, a new hoof here. Um, the, uh, the inside is officially gone. Um, and uh, the bones are still working themselves out a bit, but I've got the, I've got the capsule here and I was reminded of something that really bothers me when it comes to uh, trimming hooves or, or coming up to hooves that have been trimmed. And that is the rasping of the, the outer wall. Um, and you see it an awful lot. And one of the, one of the things that if you look around, you'll see on a darker hoof for sure, is that the rasping will carry um, far halfway, maybe, maybe even more up the wall. And it'll be rasped down so that it looks sort of flat, you see. And this almost has a bit of a, a shape that kind of comes um, uh, out and then down and in. So the, the rasping of the outer wall is something that I can say straight out should, should never, this should never be done. And there's a very good reason for it. So I'm going to give those reasons. First is, a very simple reason is that the outer wall is the armor that protects the inner structure. So everything that lives inside of this hoof um, needs protection. It needs to be protected against logs and rocks and posts and bars and and other horses and and, uh, and 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 this outer armor, this very very hard surface, is what uh, allows that to happen. Thinning this surface allows more concussion to be uh, uh, more that that the impact of any concussion to to carry into the internal structures of the hoof itself causes bruising, causes pain, gives them sore feet, uh, all kinds of things like that. You can also have um, founder through trauma and uh, and it's a big deal it's a really big deal it's very very important so thinning the outer wall this outer wall uh, through rasping um, is is bad for that um, most of the reason that i see or i perceive that the wall has been thinned out is because it's got some kind of flair to it so we might see that uh, the wall might carry out this way so it'll get rasped so that it looks like it's straight but the rasp marks don't match how the wall is actually growing down. Now, I'll cover this in more detail soon, but I really wanted to just get this out there. Let's get to the next reason. The next reason, um, a lot of the times when trimming, now this is not an ideal hoof. I can actually get a different one that's a little better. This one's a one done previously, and uh, I can show, because it's got a little bit more, more depth. I'm gonna talk about why some hooves, when they're when they're boiled, will actually um, burst outwards this way, compared to some that don't don't burst out as much. It's still relatively concave. Important thing, important thing to consider. But um, the wall has a particular thickness about it from from top to bottom. And then if you if you were to thin the wall at the bottom which is quite common, um, without reducing any length, but if you were to thin it, the horse will naturally wear that down because it's thinner. So it's not gonna have as much strength to it. It's going to sort of shave down a little bit quicker on rocks and gravel and sand and stuff like that. So it, it's actually a method to trim a hoof, to trim from the bottom and just thin this outer wall a bit so the horse can uh, uh, reduce its own length in its own time. 
naturally, or a little bit naturally, I guess you could say, because we are thinning it from, from, usually from the bottom. So we're providing a little bit more wear that it doesn't already have. But if you were to go ahead and thin it, say, halfway, and we consider how long it takes to grow a hoof, um, which is about a year, it's, it's, it's accepted that it takes about a year to grow from top to bottom. If you were to make a little notch or, you know, a lot of horses kick stuff and they get a crack or, or a chip or something up top, it'll take about a year for it to go from top to bottom. If we thin out six months worth of hoof, then it's six months that that horse has to bear weight um, on a thinned wall. Something to think about. Because then, then it leads to the idea that, um, you know, somebody's, somebody's gone ahead and say, taken off that out, outer flare. And I've got another hoof here. I think this one will work well. And this is one used in the examples. But if we take a look at there, if we take a look at the shape of how it comes down and then starts to come outwards, but this has been sort of shaved off. So it's got a, a slightly different shape to it. But if we consider where this probably went to, maybe out to here or so, and that was rasped off. I mean, it's good for a better breakover, but if this was done all the way up to here, there'd be six months of this horse being on very thin toes and, and maybe even thin quarters and, and pillars. So um, what happens then is that because the horse starts to wear down their foot so quickly, advice will be given. Well, you know, your horse wears out its feet too quickly. We should probably uh, deal with that. And usually it's done through shoeing. Um, it could possibly even be done through casting and for something that is more human caused than horse caused. So last little bit, <clears throat> if we take a look inside this piece here and if we were to imagine, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit more so you guys can see it a bit better. If we were to imagine the wall from say about here somewhere around about the middle of this hinge, right? Somewhere around the middle of this hinge. If this were thinned down to where it got to unpigmented, this more whiter looking portion of the wall, that's half of the hoof um, thickness. About half of it. If you've got to get down to unpigmented wall, you've gone through half the wall. That's a lot. And if you go down, say just half of the hoof, about halfway up this hinge, six months worth of hoof, the horse will have to support itself some way, somehow, on half the thickness of hoof for half a year or less. If you do a little less, it might be three months or something. But it's something to think about for everybody that's kind of you know, if, you, if you're taking care of your own feet a little bit, if you're trimming your own horses and somebody said, well, this is what you should do, it, it makes it look better because there's no flare. I'd, I'd say that there's very, very good science that says, don't do that. It's not going to be healthy for the hoof. It just kind of looks a little bit better. But you can always tell when it's done because one, there'll be no pigmentation in the bottom half of the hoof wall. And two, you'll see the rasp marks and it'll be, they'll, it'll just look, something will look a little wrong. Like some thickness was taken away to make that hoof look like it's actually properly, and this one's not too bad, but properly shaped at the right angle instead of there being, say, some kind of little bump here that has been rasped off. So I'll cover this in more detail. If any of you guys have any questions about that, please let me know anytime. Um, but science, Pure science right there. It, the biology of the horse says, don't, please don't do that. It's not gonna be healthy and it's gonna lead to other problems that humans then have to intervene again to deal with. So there are other wheels to, ways to deal with that kind of flare. Anyways, um, that's it. We've got two more weeks until the, uh, the next clinic's coming up for anybody local that wants to show up and find out what good and bad hooves look like. We've got lots of examples here. Last two classes have gone really, really well and uh, everybody's left with a pile more knowledge than they had when they came here. And uh, it's, it's been really good, really good um, feedback from everybody. So thank you for coming for everybody that has come and everybody that wants to come. And uh, I'm gonna leave that at that now, but I really wanted to cover that. Rasping off the outer wall. 
definitely uh, not the approach to take to deal with the problem at hand that is happening, if you can help it, so. Okay, that's it for now. Talk to you guys again really soon.